In today's video, I'm going to fit the Oxford heated grips to my Honda CB650R. So stick around for that. Before I do any work on the bike, I want to make sure that it's fully supported. So I've put a rear paddock stand under the swing arm at the back. That way the bike is totally, totally secure. And that's going absolutely nowhere. So I know that it's not going to fall over. Plus it's sitting upright and it's not leaning, leaning at an angle. So this is the first time I've fitted heated, heated grips to a bike. So um, let's see how hard or how easy it can be. From what I believe, it's a doddle. It's a piece of cake. I think the hardest part of the job will be trying to get these, these grips off. But we'll see. So let's um, get the camera up on the tripod and uh, set about it. First thing I want to do, obviously, is get the bar end weights out. If your bike's still got its original bar end weights, you may struggle to get them off. If you are struggling to get them off, I've already covered this in a separate video, which you will see in the description below, or a link just up at the top there, a little card. So getting these off because i've already had these off these are going to unwind nice and easy that's the bar end weights off next i want to get the the grip itself off i've got a couple of screwdrivers and some release oil so i'm going to try and um coax the old grip off and if need be stick some release oil in there to help make it slippy as well. Now these are just thin screwdrivers. I don't want to ruin the ruin the grips but if I've got to ruin them I'll ruin them. some release oil in there as well, that might help it. See these will be glued on and you also get glue in the kit so I'm just working my way around just trying to break the, the glue twisted there so there we are that's came off nice and easy the release oils obviously helped that so I'll give that a little clean up and then um, we'll move over to the other side hopefully that grip as well will come off easy Set a bar end weight off, I'll just stick that somewhere safe and we'll do the same on this side. This might be trickier because it's the throttle side. Where did I put that oil? Right, brought you in a little bit closer, just here there's a little lip if you can see that there and that's on the edge of the rubber 
so I'm going to try and get the edge of the grip off that. And that should let it slide off. Right, I think we're off. There we go. Bring you out a bit. There we are. That's both original grips off. And I have broke it slightly there. I don't see that being an issue at all. Right, I'll go and get some solvent and I'll clean up this because I'll need to try the, the Oxford grips on it. For cleaning these up, I'm just going to use some panel wipe. You can use brake cleaner or anything else that's a degreaser. So this should help take the, the remains of the glue off as well. And it'll obviously give the new grip a clean grease free surface to adhere to. Right, that's um, thoroughly degreased. So we'll open up the, the packet and we'll see what we get inside it. Here's what we get in the kit. We get the two grips, the controller, the fitting kit for the controller, some cable ties there and some super glue and also the instructions there and a little harness. You can't really go wrong with these grips, I've had a look at them. One grip's thicker than the other side, so obviously that, the thicker one's to go to the throttle side, because that is slightly thicker. So, let's, um, let's get these grips offered up and uh, pop them on the handlebars. Right, we'll start on the left hand grip. Um, I don't think this is going to need glued in like. That's quite tight. That's not going to need glued. I might stick a little drop on it anyway. Right. That's that. That's that one in position. Right, here we're on the other side. And already I can see I'm, I am definitely going to have to trim this off. Um, at the end, yeah, that's not going to go on. And also, this ridge here along at the back. I think I'm going to have to remove that as well. So I'll go and grab my Dremel and uh, I'll cut these two parts off. Now I've dug out the Dremel and I've dug out an old cover because this will probably be messy and I've just washed the bike so uh, we'll get all this covered up so that we don't get bits of plastic stuck in the engine and duck and dust on it right that's that so the Dremel's ready to go I've put this little stone attachment on it I don't know if that will work but We'll give it a try. Right, that's um, that trim back. I'm definitely going to have to do that side as well. Is that going to go on? Right, I'm definitely going to have to trim these ribs down and also get rid of that lip at the end. So let's um let's do that with a Dremel again.
Right, that's um, that back bit taken away. Fair bit of dust everywhere, but uh, at least the tank and the engine and all that, that's protected with uh, the cover. So what I'll do now is I'll knock off the top of these ribs here to allow the, the heated grip to slip on. If you haven't got a a little Dremel thing, quite easily do that with a hand file. It's just um, this makes it much much easier. Plus with the pointed stone that I put on it, it helped to get right in here without having without damaging the the casing here. So I'll just run over that now and we'll get these ribs uh, taken down a bit. Right, that's uh, the vast majority of that all shaved off. So hopefully this will fit on now. It does. Perfect. Magic. Right, I'm going to get all this uh, dust blown off because it's it's a mess. So we'll get all this blown away, we'll get the cover back off it and then we can move on to um, routing the wire and, and getting them attached. Right, that's all, all the dust blown off. So now uh, we can move on to getting it wired up. Now here's the bracket that you get with the kit and also the controller. So I think I'm going to mount this bracket just on this lever here and uh, have it like so. That's me attach the screws, four, four tiny little screws to the, the back of the controller there and the controller will sit just there. On this machine, these are eight millimeter bolts. I'm sure they look they look eight. Yeah, eight millimeter bolts. So I want to take these off. Right, that's the bracket built up there. With the I put a washer in the back there. That comes in the kit, so I assume that'll go in there. The spacer to get over the hump of the. Um, brake or clutch lever so that should bridge the gap and then we'll just try and put this in without it all falling apart there we are, that's that one right that's um, them on I still haven't glued the grips on yet I will, I will do that but um yeah, and we'll need to cut the grips as well. But we'll get them all wired up and make sure they're working before we go cutting things up. Right, now we've got access to the battery and where we're going to route these wires. Now, to get this off, same size the Allen key as the seat, so that'll be 5mm. There we go. Velcro strips there, and there's two little hangers there, and round the back there's little locators for these these hangers so be careful because they look like they could snap off quite easily and you've got two poppers two poppers here as well so that'll be these two holes here
that's one off. Same with the other side. That's the second one off. That's the box out now. So I think we're going to have to take these off as well at the side to allow the tank to come up. Now let's have a look and see how these are, are fastened. That's an Allen, Allen bolt there. That must be held on the clips. Let's get the right. That'll fit there. That's five mil again. Right, again this is held on with a popper and velcro. There's three velcro, velcro strips there. So if I just leave that to the side, I'll go and run over and do the other side. We do need to take this off and there is two, two little rivet things. Just these little things here. I've already broken one, but I do have spares of them somewhere. So this little rivet here, we want to push the pin up from the bottom and that will release it. So I'll show you that just now. To get this rivet out, preferably use a pair of long nose pliers. That way you can reach in. Reach in, grab the bottom of the rivet and then just push it up the way. Like so. And once you push it up, you can withdraw it. And then when you push it back in it locks. So once you get that off, it'll allow you to take this this panel here out. Right, that's the two side pieces off. The trim round the ignition switch. That's that off now. And now I can easily lever the tank. So now I'll be able to run the wiring up to the heated grips without any issues and obviously connect it into the battery there. So let's get the wiring dug out and uh, see what we were going to route it. I've started to route the cable in here. Now these grips are still not glued in yet because um, I want to make sure that I get them in a position and get the cable in, in a position that I'm happy with. So I've got the throttle, the throttle side um, I've got the cable running under so there's enough slack on that for when I twist the throttle. It goes behind the, the headlight here along with the other cable in and it comes out it comes out here. So I've got the throttle one in. The controller I've still not rooted that yet and the wire for the the left hand bar I've got that coming down along and there's a clip there where the clutch cable is, is attached to so I've got the heated grip in there as well and that's the, the wire coming out the bottom so what I think I'll need to do now as well is take this air intake off um, to allow me access under the frame. For the main cable here, this one, I've got it running under the bar where the fuel tank's hinging from. The cable comes under and it comes under the loom here and here's the end of the cable, just here. So. What I'll do is I'll get this um, I'll get this air intake here off, and uh, see if that gives me more room to get under the under the frame. Right, I'm going to take this duct off. Now there's one, two, three, four Allen bolts to get out, and then. No doubt once we've got the cover off and these bolts out, there may be another bolt 
or a screw in there to hold that on. But if I can get this off, that'll let me get the wiring round the back of it neatly. So I'll go and crack on and get, get them off. washers just fell out and that'll obviously go in at the back here there's a little little hole for it so just be careful you don't lose that and you remember to refit it I think there's tines in here. Two little tines. One at the top, one at the bottom. So we need to be careful not to break them. And at the back. At the back there's a, that's a disconnected from the air duct, at the back there's a, a bolt there. That'll be 10 mil. Things attached to that at the back, so we'll just leave that hanging loose. Right, that's me got that air duct out the road, so that'll then let me run these wires down the back of it. So I'll get the wires um, ran in and uh, we'll um, check it before we make anything final. Connecting these um, up, they're all different plugs, it will except for the heated grips ones, they're the same and I don't really think it matters what side you plug it into. it connected up so the controller works so 
So I'll just give it a couple of minutes and we'll see um we'll see if they heat up. And if they heat up okay, then we know the wiring is okay and then uh, we can conceal it and then put the the bike back together and get the grips glued on. Yep, yeah, right, that's working. So what I'll do is I'll get uh, get the wire all tucked away, leave a little bit of slack at the front here so that we can test it on lock to lock that it's not going to um, impede on anything. Yeah, that's hot, and that's hot, perfect. Right, let's get this um, wire and tidied up. Now that's me got all the all the wire in place. Obviously got to cable tie these into the loom. The duct's back on, the wire's running down through the back of that duct and it comes out comes out just here. So what I've started doing is taping up the joints. So I've already done one. So I've taped up one joint and I'm just going to do the same with the other two joints here. I've tested the grips and they're nice and hot still. So I'm going to tape them up and I'm thinking there's a, vo there's a void in here. So I'm thinking of just sticking the wires in that void. But I'll get them taped up anyway and um, see how it how it fits in in that little hole just down there. That's the wiring all rooted. Um, I've popped a cable tie on here. You don't get a lot of cable ties in this kit. There's a a cable tie just up here as well. And another one there. I just need to snip the ends off. I've turned the steering from side to side. There's no cables fouling anywhere. Um, the throttle round here. That's the position there. Yep. Yeah. Now I'm going to have it in and that turns freely. I'm just going to cable tie that on down in that part there. So I'm happy with the position of the grips so I can get them glued in now and while the while the tank's up I'm going to spray some ACF 50 on the top of the engine and the electrics in there. That will save me lifting the tank when I, when I do the rest of the bike. And I've also got to trim trim this grip and the other one. I think I'll just be trimming it on this line here but I'll see once I get the bar end waiting. So here's the ACF 50 here and uh, I'll just quickly spray that into the top into the top of the engine that way I can drop everything down and uh, I don't need to touch that again for a while anyway. This isn't necessary when you're fitting heated grips but I'm only doing this because I've got the tank up and it's easy access. There we go. That should keep the corrosion at bay in there anyway. So, while I'm letting that uh, dry up a bit I'll get these um, this side vent, the air, in, the air duct intake, I'll get that uh, put back on. Right now that I'm happy with the final position on this, we'll glue these in place. 
So that Oxford's sitting roughly, roughly there, and that's roughly square. I wouldn't imagine you need a lot of this. Dodd there. Dodd there. There we go. Not going daft with that light. Right, I'm happy with that. Uh, same with the other side, let's move over. This one I definitely don't want to, to slip. So I will put... I will put a fair little bit on this. Right, that should do that. I'm happy with that and uh, I would leave that overnight to let the glue properly adhere. That's the heated grips installed and um, the bike all built back up. I fitted my RNG bar end weights back on, no problem at all. I didn't have to trim the I didn't have to trim the heated grips. Also when I turn the lock from side to side, there's nothing binding at all. And um, these things just work a treat. So I'll be looking forward to the commute in the colder mornings and uh, the cooler evenings now that I've got heated grips. And yep, that seems starting to warm up nicely. So there we go, all in all, to do this job, um, time wise I would give yourself approximately an hour, maybe an hour and a half, if you want to take your time and get it right, but it's straightforward enough anyway. Anyway guys, um, if you're new to the channel, why not hit that subscribe button, and if you've liked the video, give me a thumbs up, that would be great. Until the next time, ride safely. And I'll catch you later. Bye for now.